Tyranny of the Hat by Liam Campbell and Clara Lucas. Log 14. Heavy Sleep. Bang! 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 Bruno rushed into his office at what sounded like gunfire. He stopped midway through the doorway to see Steven kneeling on the floor, banging a hammer into a railway spike into a sleeper through his carpet. His suit was off and he had stripped to his green undershirt. So, so what are you doing? Steven looked up at Bruno with a spike in his mouth. He spat it on the floor, nearly going through his hand. I'm building a railway track! Uh, I can see, so, but why? It's twelve at night. Stephen laughed as he stood up, looking at his work. Looks all right. What do you think? Brumo stammered. So it, it's getting late. You should be getting home now. Home? But there's work to be done, my good man. Brumo paused, looking him up and down. A good sleep will help clear your head and take your mind off whatever you're thinking. Stephen sighed. He quietly agreed with Brumo as he put a suit and hat on. Brumo gently smiled as Stephen walked past him into the foyer. He put his head down as he walked onto the station platform. No engines sat outside. It was desolate, except for the far away puffing of the harbor engines. He made his way to the grand station entrance as he snooped his way through the town square. He kept his head low as he shuffled through alleys and back streets. Eventually, he ended up at a small, dinky apartment. He pulled his key out of the suit and jammed it into the hall. With a click, he entered his house. He made his way through the cramped kitchen and went straight to his bedroom. He sat on his large bed, keeping to one side. He fidgeted with a ring on his finger. He lay down in his suit, unbuttoning it slowly. He stretched and sighed, tucking himself uncomfortably into his blanket. Slowly... His eyes closed. The clock clicked one as the couple walked onto the platform of the large station. Groups of people flooded the platform, all eyeing the newly engaged couple, smiling cheerfully at them. The man waved joyously at the people as the woman held onto his arm. Let's go to our coach, she whispered. The man brought her over to the coaches to a long, glamorous train into pausing. Do you want anything to drink, Dia? I can run over to the concession stand before the train leaves. Sure, she said, and let go of his arm. She kissed his cheek and departed for the compartment. He had control now. Wait, Helen! He tried to run into the door, but it shut in his face. No, no, let me in, let me in! He banged on the door, kicked it. But no matter what Stephen did, he couldn't get in. He backed up and surveyed the coaches. It was only this coach now. No one else was on the platform. The station was desolate. All except for the engine and the odd hooting of an owl. He slowly walked up to the engine. It was black, very sooty from the pristine train they were meant to be pulling, and very small as well. Stephen surveyed the engine. Tank engine, large bunker. German designs. He felt revolted once he saw the face, or the lack of the face. They bore a single eye in a lamp on the front of it. The eye stared at the owl perched onto its running board. The owl stared back into the eye. The owl wasn't normal either. What seemed to be galaxies twinkled in what should have been its eyes, but were beaming a bright gold. W what is this? This isn't how it goes. He looked between the owl and engine. Owl and engine. Owl and I. He stared into the lonesome eye. It felt like an eternity until the eye slowly, very slowly, fixed itself onto Stephen. Stephen looked to the owl for some help, but it too was staring coldly at him through its galaxies. Stephen stammered back as a large dark blue tender engine stood at the head of the train. He was very grand. The platform was full again. Everything was normal. Good morning, sir. It boomed cheerfully. Where did they go? Where did who go, sorry? The owl and th that tank. Wh what? I'm sorry, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. Perhaps the porter can help you. No, no, he said as he stammered back some more. I'm just going to get a drink. And he turned away as... It, it's not your fault. Stephen paused once more. He slowly turned around to see the engine. 
It looked like it had been on that day. Its face had been burnt with big metal pipes sticking through one of its cheeks, eye, and mouth. A cold red substance dribbled down from too many places to count. Its boiler practically ceased to exist as large metal pipes and tubes were bent in all directions outwards. Its bold dark blue paint was scorched to a nasty dark black. And yet, through it all, the engine was alive. It's not your fault, it gasped. Stephen stammered in place. It was mine. Don't take it out on them, it wheezed. Its boiler groaned while at it. But, but I, I don't want it to happen again. And you rather kill, ruin their lives, to protect others? I... They don't deserve it. None of them do. There was a hoot as the owl swept in. It perched itself onto the engine's funnel. Or of what was left of it, anyways. You- You! Stammered Stephen. You have something to do with this. I know who you are. And he lurched forwards and onto the engine's running board and grabbed- She was there. Somewhere. Behind all the hot steam. She lay there. Scorched. And dead. The steam blocked her body. He tried his best to push past the beliefs who blocked the way, but he was only pushed back farther into the crowd by the steam. It forced him back like a gust of wind plagued with him. The steam drew larger and larger, blocking her from view more and more, further and further, in. Stephen stood up in his bed. He was drenched in sweat. He flung the sheets off him, and he grabbed the side of the bed. He sat to the side and shakily grabbed for his bedside lamp. He turned it on and clapped his hands into each other. He looked up as he took a deep breath. He sighed as he looked down. Unconsciously, he hadn't realized he had been playing with his ring. He looked at it until bringing his hand up to his face. He didn't cry. He couldn't. He told himself that it was because he shouldn't. He was a man, and men shouldn't cry. But, in sincerity, he felt like he hadn't any tears left in him. He hiccuped shakily as he stared at the bedside table. A phone blinked, telling him he had a message. He grabbed it while looking at the clock on it. 3.33 a.m., it read. He held it up to his ear as he tried to ease his breathing. One new message, said a monochromatic voice. It clicked as it went in. This message is to Stephen Broomwell Hat. Hello! I mean, <clears throat> hello! This is Bart Simmons. Good news and bad news. Starting with the bad news, there's been a delay on, um, 11001? The men call him Dennis. Though, I don't see the point of naming it. Some restoration process? The good news, though, some new engines should be arriving soon. The D4193 and D4194. They should be arriving relatively soon, but I don't know if it's soon enough. Good evening, uh, um, good morning? And with a click, the message ended. What the fuck?